And in three, two, one, hi chickadees. Welcome to another horoscope from me, the resident astrologer of Smudge Wellness, your fave, Cole. I'm very, very excited because if you haven't noticed, my sweater says Gemini because it's May and May means Gemini season is right around the corner. And as a Gemini, I am fully already feeling my oats. So I'm so excited to dive into this horoscope. Let's start off by talking about all of the transits and then let's dive into a sign by sign recommendation based on the energy that's going to be happening in the month of May. So without further ado, let's get into it. On May 2nd, Venus, the planet of love, beauty, creativity, simple pleasures, moves into the super playful, fun, and boisterous sign of Aries. This gives the energy of what is like my passion project from when I was a kid and how can I start doing that? How can I really just have fun? How can I get out there, be social, you know, just unapologetically indulge in yourself with this transit starting on May 2nd? On the 10th, we've got two transits happening, the first of which is a Mercury retrograde. I know, I know. Everyone's like, whoa, Mercury retrograde again. I thought we just finished on that. Don't worry. This Mercury retrograde is in the sign of Gemini. So it really is an amazing time to start pushing yourself to learn new things, to focus on your communicative efforts. You know, slow and steady wins the race with any sort of retrograde energy. So really make sure that you're taking your little bit of extra time and a little bit of extra patience when it comes to all of your communicative efforts, you know, watch out for the crazy X's, you know, jump it into your DMs, make sure to double and triple check your calendar as well as every email that you send or text because you could experience a little bit of mishaps with the Mercury retrograde and Gemini energy starting on the 10th. Additionally, on the 10th, Jupiter, the planet of abundance, growth, opportunity moves into Aries as well. We are shifting out of this like intense, reflective, kind of melodramatic Pisces energy and into the super fun, chaotic, expressive Aries energy. So Jupiter and Aries gives us this really great sort of, you know, limitless potential and boundless opportunity as it pertains to going after opportunities that we want and as it pertains to really saying, I can do it all. I'm gonna do it all. So I'm really excited that we have this Jupiter and Aries tone prepping us for the summer months. On the 15th, we will be experiencing a total lunar eclipse in the sign of Scorpio, also known as a full moon in the sign of Scorpio. Listen, if you're ready to cut ties, sever shit, right? Really say, hey, I'm ready to cleanse all that energy that is keeping me away from my karmic destiny. That is the time to do so. So over the next couple of weeks, as you prepare to get to this uh, May 15th date, when the full moon, the lunar eclipse is going to be happening, saying, what are the things that I need to strip away and what are the things that I need to really cleanse myself of so that I can be open to this next journey and this next destination as it pertains to my karmic path. On the 20th, <laughs> you know what time it is. It's the most wonderful time of the year. That's right, Gemini season. The sun moves into Gemini on the 20th. I'm super excited, right? You know, not that I don't love Taurus season and not that I don't love every other season of the year, but I'm a Gemini, so you know I really, really love Gemini season. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be sassy, it's gonna be communicative. Sure, we're dealing with a Mercury retrograde, but at the same time, there's a lot of other great transits. So allow the sun in Gemini to force you to be more communicative, more social, and go read a book, go learn something, go to a museum, talk to your friends, anything like that, once the sun moves into Gemini. On the 22nd, because of the Mercury retrograde, it starts in Gemini, but Mercury moves into Taurus, right? Because we know that with retrograde energy, the planet appears to be moving backwards. So it's going to change the shift of the tone of reflection on these communicative efforts to more of the reflection on those security efforts that we know to Mercury and Taurus to be all about. So just be aware that Mercury will be in Gemini for a while, but then goes back into Taurus, but then later it will move back into Gemini. On the 24th, Mars is in Aries. Yes, this is hot. This is sexy. This is passion. This is desire. This is just like, ooh, I want to sink my teeth into it vibes. Um, Mars is in, its, is in its domicile in the sign of Aries. So that is very great because now we have this Mars rulership, right, with its natural sign of Aries. So it's going to push us to be more active. This is a great time to potentially, you know, start a sport, get to working out again, going outside, running, anything like that. Just like being really physically active and exerting your energy in a very, very present way, right? Mars and Pisces is much more lethargic.
lethargic and reflective, but Mars and Aries is saying, all right, I'm tired of taking those naps. I'm ready to actually just go to the gym and walk on the treadmill for a half hour and watch my favorite show while I do it. At least that's what I'm going to be doing. Mars and Aries is all about physically exerting energy towards the things that make you passionate and make you feel excited and that drive, right, that active type energy inside of you. On the 28th, Venus moves into its home sign of Taurus. This is earthy, this is grounded, this is present, this is super, super stable. Once Venus moves into Taurus, tons of date type, uh, date night type energy, tons of energy to really pamper yourself, pamper your loved ones, be present, go sit in a park, um, just enjoy the fact that Venus, right, the planet of love, beauty, and creativity is now in the fixed earth sign, which is saying, I get to be more present with those individuals that I love. I get to be more stable and secure with myself and with my relationships with others. So I'm very excited about Venus moving into Taurus because it's just fun little vibes, energies, give someone a big old hug, cook yourself a home-cooked meal, all things like that. Just remember, Venus and Taurus equals finding ways to love and express love through being physically present. And on the 30th, we have a new moon in Gemini. So, right, eclipse season is starting to fade away at this point. And new moon in Gemini, new opportunities. How do we want to kick off all of those new beginnings that we've realized we need to start taking advantage of during the eclipse season? New moon in Gemini is also about communicating, right? Saying what we want to have happen in our life and then also going after it. I'm a firm believer that if you vocalize it, that does create a sense of accountability. I'm really bad at that though, because I'll say, I like this idea and then never follow through with it, but people will you know, make sure to follow up with you. So just know, Mercury, uh, moon in Gemini, new moon in Gemini is all about this sense of saying, what do I want to do? What's that new beginning and how can I make it happen? Now let's get into a sign by sign horoscope. Make sure to look at your sun, your moon, and your rising for the month ahead. Starting off with Aries. Aries, this month really is. It's just all about you, how you view the world, what you want to do, and how you can just, you know, attain that and go after that. Jupiter is moving into your sign, so it really is about taking opportunities that you view that are the best for yourself. Ask yourself, what do I want, what do I want and how can I go after that? Taurus, I really like this energy for just like, reconnecting to you know your spiritual core and your spiritual center like really saying okay what are the things that i need to nurture myself a little bit better what is that sort of deeper truth and that deeper understanding that i can start working towards and then also thinking about because we do have the uh the the full moon the lunar eclipse in your sister sign of scorpio saying is there anything in terms of my relationships with others that might be impacting me from fully reaching and fully attaining right that you know sort of spiritual inner sense of balance Gemini, I love this month for a sense of just, you know, just like having a good old kiki, right? Just having a good old social fun party, getting out there, celebrating yourself, celebrating your friends, celebrating your community, and then also starting to really work towards those initiatives that you want to attain, right? That you see as good for yourself, that you are saying, this is that long-term, right, end goal that I want to have happen. So it's a really great moment for you to not only have this great social experience, but also have this great sort of personal achievement experience. Cancers! Oh, we are getting into good old career stuff for you. Expect potential career changes, new career opportunities, um, conversations, right, with your bosses or anything like that, really allowing you to level yourself up, right, and level the way that you want to, right, be recognized for your work and for your effort. I really like this because it allows you, Cancer Energy, to be a little bit more selfish, right, <laughs> be a little bit more saying, this is what I want. I take care of everyone all the time, but now I deserve to get the recognition that I see for myself. So I'm excited about this month for you, Cancers. Very, very good, uh, you know, career type energy. Leos, if you have any sort of like unfinished business going on in the home, whether that is, you know, in terms of like your family relationships for your own inner security, right? Cleaning up your space even. That's what you need to reflect on. That's what you need to think about going into this month. I also want you to think about the bigger picture saying, okay, maybe I have a little bit too much tunnel vision, right? Or isolated thought as it pertains to those potentially home sort of familial relations. How can I think, you know, broader and more expansive and try to work on and share those opportunities with others? Virgos. Ooh, Virgos. Virgos, 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 Virgos. It's time to be a little bit more sexy, a little bit more intimate, a little bit more passionate, right? Um, it's okay if like your carnal desires and like you, 
Okay, I'm trying to like beat around the bush. It's okay if you're horny this month, that's totally fine. You're gonna have a lot of eighth house energy going on and the eighth house is that house, right? That makes us wanna really, really connect intimately with someone else. Um, because of, right, the Scorpio full moon, thinking about your own personal blockages, right? That might be preventing you from building those intimate relations and intimate connections is something I want you to think about moving into the month of May. Libras! Relationship energy. It is relationship time. It is time for you if you've been saying, I've been good with being single for a while, but you are a Libra, right? And Libras are relationship signs. Uh, it's time for you to go after that. It is time for you to fully say, I'm ready to bring someone else into my life. I'm ready to get out there. I'm ready to explore all of my relationships, whether they are platonic or romantic, and try and push them to grow, right? Be a little bit more aggressive towards them, being a little bit more forceful and saying like, this is what I want to see with my connections with other people in my life. Scorpio, I just kind of love this month as just like a cleansing month for you, right? I really want this month to be an opportunity for you to look inside of yourself to say, what do I need to right, release and transform? But while you're doing it, look outside of yourself, right? Saying, okay, these are the things that my peers do and my loved ones and my friends do. How can I take a little bit of that and use that for my benefit, right? And use that as a sense of learning for myself as well. Sagittarius is, oh, go make something. Just like start a project, right? Get really, really creative out there. Get really, really excited out there. There's this lovely fifth house energy with all of this Aries energy coming up, right? You know, with Mars, Venus, Jupiter, all that jazz. I want you to get out there. I want you to share an experience with a loved one. I want you to start a project. I want you to be passionate. It really is just this amazing, expressive, creative, this is what I love. I want to share this with you type energy. Capricorns, I wouldn't be surprised if you just do like a complete overhaul of your home. I wouldn't be surprised if you say, you know what, let's <laughs> cleanse this bitch. Let's clean it up. Let's redecorate. Let's move. Let's try something different. Um, if you are a Capricorn and you have Capricornian energy, this would be a great month for you, right? In the next couple of months to start exploring a potential, you know, bigger space, um, you know, moving potential, anything like that. Uh, but it's also going to be a great time for you just to generally connect with your loved ones, right? Connect with your family and start thinking about, is there a way on a day-to-day -day basis that I can start being more active, right, in those relationships? Aquarius says, okay, we are experiencing, right, the loner eclipse in your 10th house, which is the house of career, social reputation, and achievement. If you aren't happy in the, you know, the, the career position that you are, this is a great month for you to really start creating that plan as to how can I get out of this, right? Start having those conversations, start, you know, thinking, planning, right? Inte intellectualizing, if that's even a word, about what are the steps for me to be put in a situation where I'm actually going to receive the recognition that I want. And last but certainly not least, my lovely, lovely Pisces. This is a great time for you to not only just like indulge, right, in the things that you love, what you value. It's going to be a great time for you to potentially make a little bit more extra money, right? Go out and buy some nice sort of refined things with the second house energy um, and using those things, right, to create a nice space, right, and a more sense of safety for you, right, where you live and where you are present. So I'm very excited about this energy for you as well, Pisces. Well, with all that being said, my dear sweet little chickadees, I'm sending you all so much love. Have a fantastic May. I think we're finally getting into this energy of, you know, no shade to Pisces energy, but a lot of Pisces placements can make us just a little more lethargic and a little bit more reflective, a little bit more in our feels. Now we're getting out of those feels and into just like, let's be active, let's be, you know, passionate, and let's really, really get out there and do something. So I'm excited for May, not only because it's Gemini season, but also because we're just going to be feeling a little bit more personal energy. Sending you all so much love and remember for more astrology, tarot, spiritual wellness, crystal related content. Make sure to check out Smudge Wellness on all of our socials here on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and Smudge Wellness. Sending you all so much love. Happy night.